in order to talk about the mixing of different constituents um, and their different phases we use a concept called uh, kilomole fraction so let's introduce um, the concept of kilomole fraction so let's say we have um, two different constituents at two phases so we have um, let's say phase um, constituent 1 and constituent 2 and they are in phases alpha and beta so then the kilomole fraction for each of the constituents and their phases is defined as um, so for constituent 1 the kilomole fraction of phase um, constituent one in alpha phase is um, number of moles in alpha phase over the total number of moles of that constituent. Okay. Likewise, the kilomole fraction of constituent one in beta phase is defined as number of moles of that constituent in beta phase over the total number of moles of that constituent. Likewise, the kilomole fraction of um, constituent 2 in alpha phase is number of moles of that constituent in alpha phase over total number of moles of that constituent and kilomole fraction of constituent 2 in beta phase is defined as number of moles of that constituent in beta phase over total number of moles of that constituent okay so then um, so we can write from each of these um, definitions we can write n1 alpha is equal to n1 x1 alpha okay so the total number of uh, moles or total moles of constituent 1 in alpha phase is given by total number of moles of constituent 1 times its uh, fractional mole in that phase of that phase so n1 beta is equal to n1 x1 beta and then n2 alpha is n2 x2 alpha and n2 beta is n2 x2 beta okay and then we also have the constraint that uh, the total number of particles or total number of moles total moles of constituent 1 in alpha phase plus total moles of 1 in beta phase should be equal to total number of moles of that constituent okay likewise n2 alpha plus n2 beta is equal to n2 so if we substitute uh, these expressions in this then what we get so n1 alpha is n1 x1 alpha plus um, n1 x1 beta is equal to n1 so x1 alpha plus x2 alpha is equal to one or we can also write x1 so that's um, x1 not x2 x1 beta so x1 alpha is 1 minus x1 beta likewise here we can get 
x2 alpha is equal to 1 minus x2 beta. So that gives us the relationship between the fractional kilomole um, of the different phases. Okay, and we see that here um, the state of the system, the whole system after the mixing, is determined by four independent uh, independent variables. So there is temperature pressure of the system and then x1 alpha and x2 alpha and since this is uh, constant so we keep this constant that means the number of um, independent variable is reduced to 2 okay, from 4 although we have four independent variables but because we keep these things constant so we now have only two independent variables defining the system now we can generalize this for multi-constituent and multi-phase system keeping t and p constant uh, and then we will derive the uh, equilibrium condition for the multi-constituent multi-phase system so for multi-constituent and multi-phase system Um, so you can generalize the the equilibrium condition for multi-constituent and multi-phase system. Um, previously, we already showed that the the phases of a constituent would be in equilibrium if its chemical potential is if its chemical potential for different phases are equal. So for ith, let's say for ith phase, um, for ith constituent. Uh, if the chemical potential for different phases are equal, then the phases are in equilibrium. Okay. So that means we can generalize this for any 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 constituent and for any any the, for the uh, phases of different for the phases of any constituent. Okay. So we can say for i uh, constituent. can write this as alpha beta gamma up to pi okay in general we have only three phases but we can generalize that to any number of phases okay even if we have more than three phases we can have we can generalize that so here this i is um, the ith uh, constituent but this is also true for any constituent so constituent 1, 2, 3 can go to k and then um, and then for for each of the constituents we can write the kilomole fraction the kilomole fraction for each of the constituents are um, xi gamma so where gamma is all these alpha beta gamma um, assuming this is not that's that gamma so this is some generalized uh, symbol uh, which represents all these uh, phases okay so the kilomole fraction would be total number of moles of that constituent which is ni for so we just um, sum all these uh, kilomoles of each uh, phase and then 
the mole fraction for that phase is given by uh, n i gamma. Okay, so this is the number of moles of that particular phase, and this is the total number of moles of that constituent. So it's just like um, looking at an example. So let's say you have. Um, in I alpha, this is N I beta, and this is N I gamma. So the total number of particles, or total number of moles of this whole thing, this this ith constituent, this is ith constituent, is that a denominator? Whereas we are finding the kilomole fraction for each of these phases, okay, so that's, this thing is kilomole fraction of this particular phase, and if I want to find the kilomole fraction of this one, then I need to have a different, um, like, this will be beta, okay, so here, uh, again, I uh, could be, like, one, two, three different kind of constituents, and gamma could be alpha, beta, gamma, different phases, goes up to uh, pi. So, so it looks like uh, we have here um, how many kilomole fractions we can have. So, so this many number of this many number of um, constituents and this many um, uh, phases. So it looks like we have we can have up to k times phi um, kilomole fraction. But in fact, uh, if we look at this example above here, so um, so here uh, we have four kilomole fractions. Okay. But because of this relationship, okay, this uh, relates um, the two phases. So this reduces the number of kilomole fraction. Okay. So although we have four kilomole fractions here, but um, these two, this is basically just related to that with this equation. So we don't even need four kilomole fractions. We only need two, okay, given this relationship. So that means although this relationship tells us that there could be k pi kilomole fractions but because we have uh, this relationship this um, for us this addition of fractional kilomole is equal to one so we have a pi number of this kind of um, relationships between the kilomole fractions. So that means the total number would be then k pi minus pi. Okay, so that's the number of kilomole fractions we can have. And keeping um, t and p constant, Uh, and then, um, so we also have T and P, so we need to specify that. So that means there would be um, 2 plus K pi minus pi number of independent variables. But we have um, these equilibrium conditions. So looking at um, up here, so that's the equilibrium condition. So these two are equal, these two are equal, these two are equal. So that means um, there are two uh, equal 
there, there is always like uh, equality sign between two. That means the total number of um, equilibrium condition is uh, pi minus one times. So this is pi minus one for different phases, and then we have k number of constituents. So k times pi minus one. Okay, so that's the number of uh, equilibrium conditions. So with that, so our uh, independent variables would be now reduced to uh, two, uh, 2 plus k pi minus pi minus k pi minus 1. Okay. So we need only this many number of independent variables to specify the system. So this is also called degree of freedom. Degrees of freedom to specify the system. Okay. So so f would be then two plus k pi minus pi minus k pi plus k. Um, k pi and k pi cancel, so that will be um, k minus pi plus 2. Okay. So this is the condition for equilibrium where there is no um, chemical reaction or there is no diffusion. Okay. Condition for equilibrium. Or we, this is also called Gibbs phase rule. Okay. So now let's talk about um, the Gibbs function uh, or difference in Gibbs function or change in Gibbs function for mixing process. And also uh, change the entropy during the process, okay, during the mixing process. So before we talk about the change in uh, Gibbs function for mixing process, so let's introduce uh, something called partial pressure. Okay. So when you uh, mix different constituents, usually each constituent um, contribute a certain fraction of the total pressure okay for example so let's say you mix oxygen and hydrogen and nitrogen um, in a container so oxygen will contribute to a certain part of the pressure so you'll have total pressure of p if pressure is p then part of that pressure would be contributed by oxygen which is called partial pressure of oxygen part of that would be contributed by hydrogen which is called partial pressure of hydrogen and part of that would be um, contributed by nitrogen, which is called the partial pressure of nitrogen. Okay, so we'll introduce partial pressure in this case. So mixing process, not mixing process. process which is basically the diffusion or inter inter diffusion of gases uh, in this case we'll consider only two types of constituents so two gases and since we are considering the gases so we only have a single phase for each constituent. Okay, so we have two constituents, and each has one phase. So let's say we mix. Um, Uh, 
first two into one with um, first two and two. We're actually here, uh, in this case, I will consider um, more than two constituents, okay? And then uh, we can later talk about two. So I want to generalize this, so I will um, mix um, more than two constituents here. So then the, par uh, the Kilomore fraction for each of these constituents. So let's say for this green one would be x x one. For uh, this black one, it would be x two. That's the kilomore fraction. For red one, it's uh, x three, and for blue one, it's x four. And then we can have other constituents also. Okay. So. Um, Dalton gave this um, law, which we call Dalton's law. So Dalton's law of partial pressure states that the pressure P, the total pressure P, Or uh, here, I mean the, the pressure of the jet co constituent, let's say, which is the partial pressure or the pressure contributed by this particular constituent, the partial pressure of jet constituent. Constituent gas. A mixture of different gases is given by this PJ is given by kilomole fraction times the total pressure. Okay, that's the Dalton's law, where P is the pressure or total pressure of the mixture. And let's suppose that the mixture of gases obey uh, ideal gas law, okay? Gases obey ideal gas law. So that means uh, PV would be equal to NRT, okay? So then PV is N is the total number of the whole system or total moles of whole system which is the sum of the moles of individual constituents so which is n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus dot 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 rt so then um, If I divide both sides by V, then I get um, P is equal to N1 over VRT plus N2 over VRT plus other terms. Okay, and then so these things again. Uh, each of the constituents also um, obey ideal gas law, so that means we can write P1 is equal to N1, um, the volume is same for all because they are all in the same volume, so N1 RTV, okay, that's ideal gas law, so that means this thing is uh, P1, this thing is P2, so that means P 
would be equal to um, P1 plus P2 plus P3 and so on. So, so then um, we can also write V okay, from here. V is equal to uh, N1 plus N2 plus other terms over RT over P okay. or you can write uh, V over RT is equal to this is sum of all the moles of each constituents sum of moles of different constituents over P. So then, but we have P, P G, uh, the partial pressure of jth constituent is uh, NJRT over V or PJ then would be NJVRT. Uh, so then we can write the partial pressure of jet constituent would be nj so this thing v over rt is that okay so nj over p which is so pj is nj over sum of nj times p this thing is, you know, um, the fractional kilomole. Okay, so x j p j. Uh, sorry, not p j. X j p. So the partial pressure of j constituent is its kilomole fraction times the total pressure. Okay, that's the Dalton's law. I just showed you the proof of Dalton's. Okay. Now, Now let's uh, find the uh, Gibbs function for the mixture and then from that we'll find the change in uh, Gibbs function for the mixing process. Okay, so the Gibbs function for a mixture is G is equal to uh, we saw last time that G is basically n times specific Gibbs function okay. um, so specific Gibbs function is defined as uh, total Gibbs function over moles number of moles just like specific heat capacity is defined as uh, heat capacity over number of moles. So specific heat capacity is a property of a substance, likewise this is also property of a substance, okay. So this is, if you consider a, 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 a substance, then G is always constant for that. Um, substance so G is independent of how much substance you have as long as it's in a same phase then G is always same no matter how much substance you have so G is uh, n mu and if we have multiple constituents then each constituent will 
contribute um, to this total G. So in J mu J, J, so let's say J goes from 1 to uh, kth constituent. So here again, uh, mu J, not, let's not say mu J. So uh, I don't want to use mu here. I want to use uh, small g here for the specific Gibbs function. Okay. So here, g j is, is the specific um, Gibbs function. of the jth constituent so now to find the specific give function okay so we want to find that um, for any ideal guess let's start with this um, combination of first and second law which is tds is equal to cp dt minus vdp again so how we got that relation so we have um, tds is equal to du plus pdv so du is dh minus um, so h is u plus pv so uh, du would be dh minus pdv minus vdp and then we can cancel that and that and then this dh is basically cp is du dt over not du dh dt at constant p so we can write dh to be cp dt and then we have that vdp okay now um, because uh, V depends on P so we can replace V by um, RT over P and then let's uh, divide both sides by T so we get DS so all these are small case S and small case V to find a specific Gibbs function so we want to use the small case okay? so that would be CP dt over t minus v is rt over p t and t cancel so we have r over p dp okay now let's integrate on both sides so integrate that integrate that integrate that and consider that cp is constant so then we get s um, is equal to um, cp natural log t minus r r is constant so natural log p and then some constant so let's say that constant is s naught okay that will uh, integration integral constant or integration constant and from the definition of g specific uh, gives function it's u plus pv minus ts or uh, u plus pv is h minus ts so then um, also we have partial u uh, sorry not partial u, partial h partial t at constant p is uh, cp so if i integrate on both sides then what i get so i get h so partial um, let's see here we have dh is cp dt so integrating both sides i get h is equal to cp t plus some constant let's say that's h naught okay now uh, we can write this g as g is equal to um, h is that so cp t plus h naught minus t and then s is that so cp natural log t minus r natural log p plus s naught or so g is equal to um, c 
CPT plus H uh, H naught plus or minus T CP ln t minus r t long p plus t s naught so in this expression only this expression is the one that has p and everything else has constant term with um, function of p okay so we can combine all these expressions and call that a function of t so that means we can write this as except this one. Uh, let's say this one should be plus and that one should be negative because we have minus sign in front here. So then G is R T. Okay, so that's long P plus everything else is function of T. Okay, call that phi so phi is a function of temperature now let's say to simplify our discussion let's say we mix only two uh, constituents or two ideal gases so we have Uh, ideal gas 1 and ideal gas 2 and we have n1 moles of kilomoles of ideal gas 1 and n2 kilomoles of ideal gas 2 and both are at the same temperature and pressure okay so we mix that by removing the the partition or diaphragm so it's basically the same container we are just removing this partition So after mixing, the total number of kilomoles would be N1 plus N2, and the temperature would be same. So this is initial state, and that's final state. Because temperature and pressure are intrinsic variables, so by mixing, the temperature pressure will be same. It won't change. Now the Gibbs function before mixing would be um, let's say that's GI so that's Gibbs function of this one which is N1 times specific Gibbs function for one before mixing let's call it before mixing to be i plus n2 specific give function of 2 initial here we already defined what g is so g1i is um, from this definition rt long p plus phi 1 pressure is same so we can we don't need to write um, the subscript subscript for that so g2i is rt long p plus phi 2 so now um, then the total gibbs function would be then n1 rt long p plus phi 1 plus n2 rt long p plus phi 2 okay so although uh, phi 1 and phi 2 both are the functions of same temperature but the functions uh, the functions themselves are different because um, the functions have cp and the CP can be different for different gases. Okay? If you mix uh, hydrogen and helium, then they may have different um, 
specific capacity at constant pressure. So different for different constituents and since phi has cp in, in, it, in it that means phi is also different for different constituents okay so that means um, we cannot just write phi instead of phi 1 and phi 2 so we need to separate phi 1 and phi 2 so now uh, this is the initial Gibbs function so the final Gibbs function after mixing will be given by n1 g1 final plus n2 g2 final so here again g1 final would be rt from p1 now we have mixture of two gases okay so the total pressure is p but each will contribute the partial pressure of p1 and p2 okay so the, the first constituent will contribute the pressure of p1 and the second one will contribute the pressure of p2 that will make the total pressure p okay so that's the pressure of the partial pressure of one by one and g to f r t long p two plus phi two and because the temperature doesn't change in this mixing process the temperature remains same so we don't need to worry about um, this one um, phi one initial phi one final they both are same because the temperature is same and also um, CP is it doesn't change now let's use the concept of fractional kilo mole uh, sorry the uh, partial pressure in terms of fractional kilo mole so we have p1 is x1 p and p2 is x2 p so we can get g1 f is equal to rt long p1 plus um, we want to replace p1 by p1 by x1 p plus phi 1 and then g to f is rt long p2 is x2 p plus phi okay so this is rt now <coughs> log of a product is the sum of the logs of the the variables so that's um, So that would be um, long ln p plus ln x1 plus phi g to f is rt ln x1 plus ln p plus phi this is phi 2 so um, the total Gibbs function final would be uh, we have this n1 g1 f plus n2 g2 f so that's n1 uh, g1 f is rt ln p plus phi plus ln x1 plus n2 g2 f is rt ln x that's x2 sorry x2 because we are using this x2 plus phi 2 plus ln p 
Now let's define a quantity called mu, which is um, ln define this quantity to be mu um, so this whole thing actually so mu is RT ln P plus phi plus ln X so that means we can write GF as n1 mu1 plus n2 mu2 and you will see why I used a mu to denote that so now we have this um, Gibbs function from the previous discussion from previous lecture so we got the total Gibbs function to be g is equal to sum of uh, mu j and j j goes from 1 to some m so if we compare this equation with this one okay for two constituents this would just be uh, mu 1 n 1 plus mu 2 n 2 and this equation this mu is chemical potential Here we haven't said this is chemical potential. We just use some symbol. Okay. So that means we see that these things are, if we compare this one with this one, then okay. Comparing these two, we see that here these mu's the mu is the chemical potential okay that's why we use uh, mu to denote that okay. so Again, uh, like I said before, G is a specific um, Gibbs function. So, so they are the characteristics of the constituents or characteristics of a substance. So they are same no matter how much substance you have. Okay. So since G1 and G2 are properties of the constituents they are same for because the phase doesn't change after mixing so they are same for initial and final states after the mixing before and after mixing so that means so we can drop the subscripts subscripts on G like we have um, this expression for G so G is n1 g1 i plus n2 g2 i so we, we don't need to write this i because it's irrelevant okay, so we can write this as g is equal to n1 g1 plus n2 g2 so that means now um, the main purpose here is to find this change in Gibbs function during the mixing process so now delta G would be final Gibbs function minus initial Gibbs function so we already got the expressions for these so for final we have n1 mu1 plus n2 
mu2 and for initial we have n1 g1 um, plus n2 g2 so this would be n1 mu1 minus g1 plus n2 mu2 minus g2 okay, that's delta g so so now delta g now let's replace the um, the expressions for gf and gi so gf minus gi so here gf we got the expression for gf which is um, nr n1rt ln p plus phi 1 plus ln x1 okay plus n2 r t ln p plus phi 2 plus ln x2 so that's g final minus g initial is n1 that's what we got for g1 gi ln p plus phi 1 plus no let's so we have minus here so this would also be minus uh, n r t l n p plus phi 2 okay so we can cancel this term and this term this term and that term so what will be left is this n1 r t times l n x1 plus n2 r t l n x2 so that reduces our delta G to a simple form in terms of the kilomole fraction. So N um, N1 R T L N X. Oh, by the way, uh, we can also write N1 in terms of kilomole fraction. So we have n1 is equal to um, basically uh, we already showed that in the very beginning so x1 is n1 over total number x2 is n2 over total number so n1 would be n times x1 rt ln x1 plus n2 is n times x2 rt ln x2 so then delta g can be written as n times rt x1 ln x1 plus x2 ln x2 okay so that's the expression for delta g okay now let's find also find the expression for the change in entropy during the mixing process so we know from the reciprocity relationship in uh, Maxwell's equations when we derive the Maxwell's uh, equations or Maxwell relations we got this reci reciprocity relation so del uh, s is negative delta g negative partial g partial t at constant p so since we want to find delta t uh, delta s so apply delta s on both sides we can get partial partial t delta g at constant p okay so that means delta s now we have delta g already given by this expression so taking uh, that expression derivative of that expression with respect to t we'll have n r and then the rest is just as it is okay 
So this expression gives us a change in entropy during the mixing process. Okay. So that's how we find delta G and delta S for any mixing process. So that's very um, elegant way to find these variables, these quantities, because um, X1 and X2 are basically how much helomole fraction um, there are in the mixture. And by knowing that, you can find these things. Okay, It's a very, very nice result. Okay, that's all for this uh, lecture. We'll continue this uh, in the next lecture.